Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother. Hello, everybody. This is Danny Lambert with Plush Republic. Uh, today, I'm going to be kicking off the creation of my uh, free mix panel course. Uh, and to begin this, I'm going to have a very basic course covering what is mix panel, uh, why it's important, and particularly how it's different from uh, Google Analytics. So a lot of the questions I get when I'm consulting or even within uh, the organizations that I work for is why do we need Mixpanel? How is it different than GA? Uh, trying to make sure that you're not spending money on duplicative tools that could do the same thing. Um, and a lot of time these two come up because they're similar in ways and they're very different in ways. Um, so I'm gonna explain to you what exactly is Mixpanel, how it's different than GA, and then following this video, I'll kick off the course by creating uh, an entire build out of a Mixpanel instance, both client and server side, um, all the way from beginning to end. So everything that I'm showing you in the back and here and all these, these screens are just sandboxes with dummy data in them, um, but it'll give you a very good understanding of, of what Mixpanel is. So let's jump in. Uh, behind me I have the Mixpanel site, which has uh, relatively recently been redone. So if you wanna find out about the various uh, features and solutions, all that good stuff, this would be your, your kicking off point. Um, but essentially what Mixpanel allows you to do uh, is get very in-depth product and user analytics um, for your applications and the product that you've developed. Uh, GA is extremely good at getting the uh, page level data, channel level data, uh, return on ad spend, stuff of that nature. Uh, but when it gets down to events and individuals tracking at user levels, uh, GA is actually pretty poor with that. So I'll jump in and show you examples here. Of, of both where Google Analytics excels and then where Mixpanel fills in a lot of those product gaps. So here I am in a Google Analytics account and like I mentioned, it's a necessity for businesses to maintain um, some high level uh, page view uh, analysis. For example, all this uh, channel level reporting that you get here um, by traffic, by source and medium and being able to see return on ad spend uh, this is where GA really excels, being able to break this up by the various goals that you track and see what your uh, return on investment is for all of your ad channels and how people are engaging with your pages uh, pre-conversion, uh, as well as some of the interesting developments they've had around uh, like multi-channel um, and multi-touch attribution. So you can come in here and analyze your conversions based on uh, first touch, last touch, uh, various different models. Oops, sorry. I didn't mean to click that. Um, and being able to like compare what those models are. So if I were in here, um, being able to do like a last interaction versus a first interaction versus a linear, this is stuff that uh, Mixpanel doesn't really do. It's not really their focus. Um, and a lot of the reasons why GA is extremely helpful. Um, the areas where this starts to become less beneficial is after these people convert and I want to track uh, more information associated with individual users, right? So if uh, someone converts in my application, I'm not allowed to pass uh, personally identifiable information such as email, first name, last name into Google Analytics. It has to be anonymized. Um, so the tracking there starts to become difficult because I want to be able to associate uh, traits with people and events with people, put them into cohorts and, and analyze them within the context of my application um, and GA makes that, that very challenging. You can send events to Google Analytics, but all of it has to be anonymized, and it's also all client side. So for people who are using uh, ad blockers, you'll have big uh, holes in your data sets. It also does sampling, so you can't actually see a full 100% of your data set. It'll sample once you get to, to large quantities uh, to show you like what's representative of the whole, but not the actual whole, um, which is not good when you're doing it at uh, a user level, you want to actually see the actions of your entire user base. So that's just another component. So when I hop into uh, Mixpanel, what it allows me to do is typically after the conversion, track all of the events that we care about, um, about all of our users at a personal level. So as I can show you, unlike GA, when you pass user level data in, I can pass uh, personally identifiable information. I'll go to myself here and I can send in all of these traits, track them over time, track how they change, uh, and group them and analyze them on a bunch of different uh, levels. So I'll quickly run through what those are for you, and then we'll begin actually uh, building out the course. 
So when you hop in, you'll have a whole section of analysis, which is uh, taking that user level and event level data that you send in and how you can slice it up uh, to see how people are performing within your application. So I'll give you like a brief run through. Insights is where you can come in here and check out uh, specific events and how they're trending over time uh, within your business. So load a page, new lead. Uh, you know, obviously this is this over time. I can take this out to 90 days. I can filter it based on events and personal cohorts. So I could see these events by mobile or I could see them by desktop um, or, or country, whatever it is that I want to do. I can slice and dice it here in this insights report and start to get very consistent trends uh, over time. The flows is really helpful when you want to see how people are actually engaging throughout your application. So if you have a sign up flow or a post conversion flow or an onboarding training flow, this is super helpful for uh, a product and product marketing team to or a product manager or product marketing team be able to come in and see are people engaging with the features and flows that you're building in the way that you intended? Are they uh, finding success or are they having issues? This is a very good indicator and way to be able to quickly see are people interacting with your app the way that you expected, and if not, find uh, where that's going wrong and ways to fix it uh, quickly. Uh, funnels is my favorite for uh, anything that is like a very predefined, highlighted, outlined funnel that you expect people to come through. For example, like a checkout flow. Um, I don't have any data in here yet, but we'll build this entire thing out uh, as the course goes along. But a good example here would be like, loaded a page and then became a lead, right? Like the most basic funnel of all time. If I saw this, I would say 593 uh, page loads and, and zero leads. This is something that we absolutely need to fix. Um, and you can start to use this to analyze all of your funnels by cohort, by property, um, really getting granular with your data to be able to get the insights that you need to make product level uh, and investment level decisions. Probably the most important report of all, in my opinion, within Mixpanel is this cohort report. So for example, depending on if it's like you expect retention weekly, monthly, quarterly, yearly, you can start to break this down into um, all new users who have signed up by the day that they signed up and start to see their retention over time, how much they come back, how much they spend with you. And you can sequence it by, by any event. It doesn't have to be sign up um, and next purchase or like it can be monthly active users, whatever you track. Um, you can start to see what um, your churn rate is and what your return rate is um, across any events that you want to track and you have a ton of granularity uh, around recurring first time the way that you structure this data to get the most out of it um, we're going to spend a significant amount of time on this report in future videos uh, i do not have predict enabled in here because this is a sandbox that has not been upgraded but predict is essentially mixed panels uh, ai component that will be able to ingest all of your data and like, hypothetically suggest these, this group of free trial users is the most likely to upgrade. And then you can lever, leverage these insights uh, in their messaging component to be able to send uh, push notifications or emails and start to activate uh, these various cohorts that they've predicted are the highest uh, propensity to buy from you, for example. Uh, signals are really cool is that you can then select your various cohorts. So all people who have been retained uh, four weeks from their first purchase, and you can start to see the events that are driving success. So the stuff that you would want to replicate within the rest of your user base to help them find as much success as your currently most successful customers. This is extremely helpful because we all do a lot of stuff to try to make our customers successful, but it's great to be able to see uh, relatively quickly what are the things that are actually driving monetary success for the business. Uh, and that's how you can find that information in here. Last two are impact, which we'll go into in depth later. I don't have enough data in this section to show you anything right now. And uh, live view which is the actual like live view where you can see events from all the people who are coming in. Uh, so all the properties, the properties that you set and the ones that are default from Mixpanel, this is gonna be a really good area for coming in here and QAing and making sure that the stuff that you're sending or anticipating is being received by Mixpanel is actually coming through. Uh, the next most important section is that user section, which I showed you before. This is where you can hop into individual user profiles, group them by whatever you want, and just make sure that you're getting the data, see what data you are getting, and then you would have a whole flow and history of everything that uh, this uh, leader prospect has ever done uh, with your application or um, business. And then this final tab here is cohorts. This is where you actually create the cohorts that you would use in your other reports. So new signups from mobile in the last 30 days or 
uh, new users from Africa, for example. You can create those cohorts and then you can use them elsewhere. Um, so that's pretty much the fundamentals of Mixpanel as, as a brief um, synopsis of what we just discussed is GA is extremely valuable for uh, page level reporting, channel level reporting, and attribution and ROI uh, on ad spend. So return on ad spend analysis for what's driving uh, your top of funnel leads and conversions uh, and how people are engaging with you client side and, and all that page view uh, level analysis. And then Mixpanel is extremely powerful for uh, user and event level data within your product, typically post conversion and trying to see where people are having success, where they're not, analyzing lifetime values and, and, and all of the various um, post conversion metrics that you really care about and getting very granular with your product. Uh, so hopefully this explanation was helpful and the next video we'll go ahead and just get started with how to implement uh, client side tracking with Mixpanel and then we'll hop onto server side tracking and then we'll really start building out our entire sandbox and starting to get some value out of Mixpanel. Uh, so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and stay tuned for the rest of the content to come. Oh, this new crazy mother